Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us at the third annual Coalesce on our last day towards the end of the day. Thanks for sticking with us. My name is Announcement Samada, and I'm on the community team at DBT Labs. I'll be your host for today's session, DBT Project Evaluator, a space odyssey. Our next speaker is out of this world. Her name is Grace Goheen, and she's an analytics engineer at DBT Space Labs. Fun fact about Grace, Grace performed in a sequel to Shakespeare's Twelfth Night in the New York Theater Festival recently. Wow, Grace, even in your off time, you're performing in sequel. <laughs> After Grace's part, the demo will be done by our second speaker, Grace Lynn, who is not here yet, a little bit unprofessional, but I'm sure they'll be here on time. A few last notes before we jump in. All chat conversations and Q&A will take place in the Coalesce DBT Project Evaluator channel of DBT Slack. That way we can connect with the remote attendees tuning in from around the world. And thanks for joining us. If you're not part of Slack, visit community.getdbt.com and look for Coalesce DBT Project Evaluator. And if you're already tuned in, our chat champion Dave Connors already posted an icebreaker. Let's engage, let's have fun almost the end of the day. New Orleans attendees, please be aware that we are 30 seconds ahead of the folks watching online. So try your best to refrain from sharing spoilers in the chat. And for everyone tuning in from Jupiter or Mars, please keep the theory of time dilation in mind as you post your comments in Slack. After the sessions, the speakers will join the Slack channel to answer your questions. However, we encourage you to ask questions at any point. Let's, let's make some noise for Grace. Since the dawn of time, the professional services team here at DBT Labs, an intergalactic group of aliens, has been united by their mission to successfully help people adopt and manage DBT throughout the galaxy. Now, as we've traveled the Milky Way, working with a variety of different creatures, we discovered common issues in DBT projects that led to incorrect outputs without any alerting, long execution times when building or querying a model, duplicated code and differing metric definitions across teams, lack of knowledge of what a table or field represents, and wasted developer time, locating and reading through messy SQL files. And as we fix these problems over and over and over again, we began to hone our best practices for working with CBT and the ways that any analytics engineer, regardless of their home planet, could improve their DBT project. Now, as you all know, aliens are strong believers in the power of open source, so we wanted to share these best practices with the entire galaxy. So we wrote articles, we gave coalesce talks, we created training courses, and we personally delivered an astronomical number of audits. Client engagements where we evaluate a given DBT project and provide specific recommendations to help them improve performance, save developer time, and prevent misuse of DBT's features. When extraterrestrial species adopted our best practices, their projects became more usable, fast, organized, and perhaps most importantly, scalable. But us aliens grew tired of devoting countless hours to manually combing through DBT project after DBT project. And even with the sea of content that we had created, it still took engineers months or even years to truly digest all of this knowledge and apply it to their specific projects. And that's when we came up with a space altering idea. What if we could compress all of our ideas about best practices into a single actionable tool to automate the process of discovering these misalignments so that analytics engineers across the galaxy could immediately understand exactly where their projects deviated from our best practices and be empowered to improve their projects on their own. So we tinkered, we dabbled, we coded, until finally we had built the DBT Project Evaluator, a DBT package that uses the shared language of models and tests 
to identify specific recommendations for a given DBT project. There's five main categories of coverage for this project, for this package. First, we've got modeling. For example, checking that every raw source table has a one-to-one -one relationship to a staging model to centralize your data cleanup. Testing, for example, checking that every model has a primary key that is appropriately tested. Documentation, for example, checking that every model has a description. Structure, which covers both file structure and naming best practices. For example, checking that the SQL file for a given model is in a subdirectory aligned with the model type. Right, so an intermediate model is in an intermediate subdirectory. And performance, for example, checking that every model that directly feeds into an exposure is materialized as a table. When you apply this package to your own DBT project, first, it converts the graph object, which is a variable that contains information about the nodes in your DBT project, into a queryable table. Essentially, this enables us to be able to write SQL queries against a tabular representation of your DAG. Next, every misalignment of a best practice is captured in a model. And finally, those models are tested to alert you to the presence of misalignments within your own project. Now, we understand that there might be specific instances where you do need to deviate from our best practices, and that's actually okay, as long as you've evaluated this misalignment and understood exactly what you're doing and made the active choice to do something different. That's why this package also comes with a simple mechanism to document exceptions so that they won't be flagged in these tests in the future. So all you have to do is create a seed file with a record for each of your exceptions. Additionally, this package contains a very extensive readme that outlines for each misalignment why it's being flagged, if there are any known issues to the rule or known exceptions to the rule, and how to actually fix the issue. When we launched this package to the entire galaxy, we celebrated, we rejoiced, patted each other on the back, and then we took a much needed vacation to Saturn's rings. My name is Gracelyn. Um, I'm an analytics engineer here on planet Earth, and I'm using DBT to keep track of my astronauts' missions into space, because I want to let my International Space Committee, you know, keep up to date with accurate metrics about my astronauts, such as the total number of days they've spent in space. Now, we're planning to grow our data team, and I want to make sure that we're aligned with DBT Labs' best practices so that our project remains usable, fast, organized and scalable. So I need to identify and fix the current issues in my project, and then I also want to make sure that I can confidently scale my data team without worrying about losing project quality. What's this mysterious new tool? Let's check it out. Okay, so I can find the DBT project evaluator on the package hub, which is an index of packages to help you level up your DBT project. And I can install this one into my own DBT project by copy and pasting this code snippet into my packages YAML file. So I'm going to copy that over and pull up my DBT project. So I'll navigate to my packages YAML file and paste this in. Looks like I already have DBT utils installed. This is going to install the DBT project evaluator package. Next, I'm going to run a DBT depths. And this command is going to essentially fetch the code for the version of the DBT project evaluator package that I just specified in my packages YAML file, and then put it into my local DBT packages directory. And once this has completed successfully, I can then execute a DBT build for everything in this package using selector syntax. So I'm going to do a DBT build, and I'll zoom in a little bit, select package DBT project evaluator. And we'll make sure that kicks off successfully. Okay, so while this runs, I wanted to quickly define a DBT package for those of you who have not used one before. Uh, essentially, a DBT package is just another DBT project 
with models or macros that solve a specific problem. And when you install that package, the package's models or macros become accessible to you within your project. So that's why I'm able to do a dbt build for everything in this package using simple selector syntax. It also means that I'm going to be able to reference the models in this package using the ref function the exact same way that I would reference any model within my own dbt project. OK, so that's finished running successfully, which means all of the package's models have been built in my warehouse. And we'll notice that there are two warnings popping up. So this indicates to me that there are currently two types of misalignments currently present in my dbt project. So for each of these misalignments, we are going to first identify the model name. Second, we are going to locate the related documentation in the readme to understand why this is an issue. Third, we are going to actually query this model to find the specific instances of this issue in our project. And then finally, we're either going to fix the issue or document it as an exception. That sounds like a lot. Don't worry. We're going to go through it together for each of these misalignments. So let's start with this first one, is empty fact missing primary key tests. So my model name here is fact missing primary key tests. And remember, there's an awesome readme, very extensive. It's going to help me understand why this issue is being flagged, if there are any known exceptions, and how I can actually fix this issue. So we're going to go into the readme and find the documentation for missing primary key tests. So back into the package hub. I'm going to open up this readme on GitHub. And if I scroll down to package documentation, uh, I'm going to identify missing primary key tests right here under testing. And I'll click into that, open up these toggles. So fact missing primary key tests is capturing all of the models in my project that don't have a primary key that is appropriately tested. So it's missing a unique and a not null test. And we're flagging this because without properly testing the grain of your models, you risk both the reliability and scalability of your project. Okay, so now that we understand this issue, we can actually go back to our project and query the fact missing primary key test model to find out which of my models don't have the appropriate tests on their primary key. So I'm gonna go back to my dbt project. I'm gonna open up a statement tab and I'm gonna do a select star from Again, using the ref macro, fact, missing, primary key tests. And I'm going to preview these outputs. OK, so this tells me that dim astronauts, which is a model within my own project, is missing the appropriate tests, appropriate tests on its primary key. So my next step here is I'm going to query this dim astronauts model so that I can figure out what the primary key is. So I'm just going to do a select star from dim astronauts. And again, I'm going to preview these outputs. Okay, so probably as expected, dim astronauts contains information about each of my astronauts. So my primary key here, I think, is going to be astronaut name because I expect this field to be unique for each of my records and never null. So now to actually assert this expectation, I'm going to add a unique and a not null test on this astronaut name column. So I'm going to open up the YAML file that defines the descriptions and the tests for this dim astronauts model, and I'm going to add these two tests to the astronaut name field. So we're in dim astronauts, we're looking at the astronaut name column. Looks like it already has a relationship test. So I'm just going to add a unique and a not null test. And I'm going to save this file. OK, so that issue has now been fixed. And we'll return back to the run results to look at the second warning that was popping up. So our second warning is, is MD fact multiple sources joined? So again, we're going to go back to the readme to figure out why this is an issue, and we're looking for multiple sources joined. So back into the readme, I'm going to scroll back up to the top of project documentation, and under modeling, we will see the section for multiple sources joined. So we'll go in there, we'll open up these toggles. All right, so fact multiple sources joined is capturing all of my models that are referencing multiple sources. 
And we're flagging this because we believe that every raw source table should have a one-to-one -one relationship with a staging model to do your data cleanup once to then be used in downstream data modeling. Now, for this rule, there is an exception, which is that if you have multiple identical sources, it's actually okay to union together those sources first and then build a staging layer on top of the combined result. Okay, so the only specific thing there is that they need to be identical sources and you do need to be expecting to only ever use the combined result in your downstream modeling. So now that we understand that issue, we'll go back to my project and we'll actually query again this fact multiple sources joined model to find the specific issues in my project. So let's go back to our statement tab and I'm gonna do a select star from fact multiple sources joined. And again, we're gonna preview those outputs. Okay, so looks like my stage missions model, which is a model in my project, has two source parents, both space travel faked missions and space travel missions. And if I actually navigate to the SQL file associated with this stage missions model, we can see this visually represented here in the lineage tab as well, right? So my stage missions model in purple has these two green source parents. And if we look at the code here, it looks like stage missions is first unioning together these two sources and then doing a little bit of data cleanup. So should I break this apart into two models and have one staging model for my faked mission source and one staging model for my mission source? Well, if we think back to the exception, it's actually okay to union together sources first, as long as those sources are identical and will only ever be used collectively. So let's preview these sources and find out if that is actually the case. So let's start with our space travel mission source, and I'm just gonna preview the outputs of this. So my mission source looks like it contains the name, the description, the start date, the end date and the number of orbits completed for each of my missions. We'll keep that in mind and we're gonna compare that to the faked mission source. Okay, so this source has the exact same fields but only contains information for my faked missions. So these sources are identical, and I do actually want all of my downstream modeling to use these sources collectively. So this misalignment is actually okay, as it's an exception to the rule. So now that I've evaluated this issue and understood why in this specific instance, it's okay for me to break this rule, I can now document that stage missions should be an exception to the fact multiple sources joined rule, so that it won't be picked up again next time I run this package. Now, the directions to do this are all in the README under the configuring exceptions to the rules section. So no need to frantically take notes. It is all here. Also, all of the code snippets are here. Um, but we're gonna walk through it together. So step one, we are going to create a new seed file to document this exception. Step two, we're gonna deactivate the seed from the original package. And we'll see why that's important in just a little bit. And then finally, we are going to rerun the package as well as our exception seed. So let's start with creating the new seed file. We're gonna name it DBT Project Evaluator Exceptions, and it's going to have these fields, which I am going to copy over. Okay, so back into my project, I'm going to create a new seed file called DBT Project Evaluator Exceptions. and I'm going to paste in those field names. So next, I wanna add a record to this seed file for the exception that I just found. So fact name is which of the packages models captures the rule that I'm making this exception for. So for us, that's fact multiple sources joined. Column name is the related column in that model. For us, that's going to be child. ID to exclude is which of my models I want to exclude from this check. For us, that's stage missions. And finally, I'm gonna add a comment to explain to everyone in the future why I did this. Um, maybe I'll say model unions together to 
identical sources. And I'm going to save that. Now, if you're paying extra close attention, you will notice that a compilation error just popped up on the bottom of my screen that's telling me that there are two different versions of the DBT project evaluator exception C. So this is because the package itself contains an empty version of the seed file in order for it to run properly. So that gets us to step two, which is gonna be deactivating the original seed file from this package. Again, there is a code snippet for to do this in the readme. I like a challenge, so I'm gonna code it by hand. Um, so we're gonna go into our dbt project evaluator YAML file, and we are gonna specify that for the seeds, specifically the ones in the dbt project evaluator package, specifically the one that is named dbt project evaluator exception seed, I want to set the enabled flag to be false. And we'll know I did this right and that there's no spelling errors because when I save it, that compilation error will go away. My final step here is I'm going to rerun this package, but this time I'm also going to run that exception seed. So I'm going to similar syntax from before, I'm doing a dbt build and I'm selecting everything in the dbt project evaluator package, but this time I'm also going to run the dbt project evaluator exception seed. And we'll kick that off. Okay, so this is again going to run all of the checks in my package just like before, but this time it is going to exclude my stage missions model from that multiple sources joined rule. So we'll let the anticipation build, see if I did everything right as this runs. All right, so the build completed successfully and you'll notice that there are no warnings popping up. So this is because I fixed the issue with the missing primary key test and then I also added that exception for the uh, staging model that unions together those two identical sources. So my project is now aligned with DBT Labs' best practices. But what's going to happen when more developers join my team? How can I ensure that they are not going to introduce new misalignments without manually checking and fixing all of their work? Well, in order to automatically maintain project quality as my data team grows, I can enforce alignment with DBT Labs' best practices on all future code changes by adding this package as a CI check. So every time someone on my team or myself opens up a new pull request, this check will automatically ensure that the new code changes don't introduce new misalignments. Um, so this is really important because it's gonna make sure that I don't have bugs or misalignments sneaking their way into my main branch. And having, having this additional layer of protection on my code is gonna make sure that I feel really confident when I'm growing my team. So again, all the instructions to do this are in the readme under running this package as a CI check. We'll walk through it together. So step one, we're gonna override the test severity using an environment variable. And then second, we are going to run this package as a step in our CI job. So let's start with step one. And if we think back to when I first ran this package and the misalignments were popping up as warnings rather than errors, this is because by default, all of the tests in this package have the severity of warn. So I actually wanna override that for my continu integration, continuous integration environment. So to do that, I'm going to create a new environment variable. So back into my dbt project, under deploy, I'm gonna to go to environments, specifically environment variables. And I created one ahead of time, but you can name it whatever you like. I named mine dbt project evaluator severity, and I wanna set the value for this environment variable to be whatever I want the severity for the test to be equal to in each of these environments. So I want the test severity to be error for continuous integration, and I'm gonna leave it as warn for all other environments. So once I've created this environment variable, go back to develop, and I'm gonna actually configure that I want the tests in this package to be equal to whatever the environment vari variable evaluates to which is gonna depend on which environment that I'm actually in. Again, I'm gonna hand code this, but there's a code snippet in the readme, you guys can just copy it over. So for all the tests in the dbt project 
evaluator package, I want to set severity equal to that environment variable. So I'm using this formatting, and then I'm specifying the name. So dbt project evaluator severity. Great. I'm going to save that. So my final step here is I'm going to add this package as a step to my CI job. So I'm going to go to deploy. This time I'm going to go to my jobs. Thankfully, I already have a slim CI job set up, so we're just going to need to update these commands. So I want my slim CI job to first build all of my models and their downstream dependencies. It's like a very typical CI job in dbt cloud. I want to maintain that as my first step here, so I'm actually going to entirely exclude the package from this first step. So I'm just going to add an exclude flag with the same syntax as earlier, package dbt project evaluator. Then I'm going to add a second step to run all the checks in this package to check for areas of misalignment. So this is the exact same syntax from earlier. I'm doing a dbt build, select package, dbt project evaluator, and then I'm actually also going to run that exception seed. And I'm going to save it. Okay, so now to see this all in action, we are going to go back to develop and we are actually going to commit our code changes and open up a pull request. So I've commit my changes, and now I'm going to create a new pull request. And I'm sure you all will really well document your pull requests, but for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to go ahead and create one. And when I open up this pull request, it's going to automatically kick off that dbt cloud CI job. So we'll see the status go from expected to pending. And once that happens, we'll know that the job has kicked off. There it goes. So we'll click into the details page to actually watch this job run. So my CI job now is going to, step one, run all of my modified models and their downstream dependencies, check for any bugs, and then second, it's going to check for areas of my project and make sure that they're misaligned with, or make sure that they are aligned with dbt Labs' best practices. So Another step you can do here is go into your Git provider and add branch protection rules such that your developers will be unable to merge their code changes in unless this job passes successfully. And this is really huge because it will essentially stop anyone from accidentally merging in code that is not aligned with dbt Labs' best practices. It's important to document a process here for what to do if this job does fail. Likely, the engineer responsible for this pull request We'll evaluate the error message, and then, just like I did, either fix the issue or document it as an exception. We'll reload this. And great, everything passed successfully. So my project is now aligned with dbt Labs' best practices, and I've added this additional layer of protective code so that I can really confident when I scale my data team, they're not going to introduce any more misalignments. Thank you, Gracelyn, for that lovely demo. <laughs> I have journeyed across space and time to join you all here at Coalesce in hopes that you will help us fight the war against non-scalable dbt projects. We are going to continue traveling the Milky Way, and armed with this new tool, we'll be able to dive deeper with our consulting engagements and continue to hone our best practices as the dbt product evolves. And just like Gracelyn, you all can install this package into your own dbt projects. If you notice any weird issues or you have awesome ideas for future functionality, you should open up an issue in GitHub or even considering contributing code of your own. Together, we can ensure that dbt projects across the galaxy are set up for success as they grow to infinity and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Grace, for an amazing presentation, and please let Gracelyn know that we're grateful to them as well. So folks, keep chatting it up in Coalesce DBT Project Evaluator. 
if you're online, thanks for joining us. And our next session titled, When the Real World Messes with Your Schedule, Event-Driven DBT Models for the MDS. We'll be starting in 15 minutes in Celestine F. Thank you all, see you soon. Leadership would like to change the business with data. Sounds good to me. Uh, could you tell me a little bit more about what we're looking to solve specifically? I feel like we have tons of data, but no idea where it lives. We also have no idea how to interpret and contextualize that data. Uh, everyone is asking the same questions. And we have no idea if the data is fresh or if it's even correct. Honestly, it just seems like you need Workstream.io. Can everyone see my screen?